What are you up to? <laughs> Recording a podcast or Oh sorry, were you waiting for me? No, it's okay. <laughs> what were you doing? Were you just taking pictures of the cat? Yeah, um yes. <laughs> Professional. Are they still drunk? Are they hung over? Sophie and Daniel, definitely not sober. You're listening to the Hangover You Don't Deserve podcast. Hi guys, welcome to episode 53 of a Hangover You Don't Deserve podcast. My name's Daniel. Sophie's just lugging some Guinness. She'll be with you in a minute. Say hello, Sophie, when you get a chance, yeah? Hello, Sophie. Oh, I, I had to stop myself from repeating your whole sentence then. I'm sorry. I just can't let this go. Well, that's great. Firstly, just want to say we're brought to you entirely by Patreon supporters uh, funding, and we appreciate everyone who is supporting us through the Patreon system. <laughs> Thanks for that. Uh, we want to say a huge thank you to Adria Bowman and Jared Spear for their continued support from the beginning of the podcast right through to now and hopefully forever. They're not tied in. They've not got like tenure or anything, but we, you know, we hope. Oh, wouldn't it be great if we could set up like contracts on Patreon? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but what you didn't know you were signing at the time. That would make this a real job. <laughs> <laughs> if we just have a salary paid by... The yeah. Patreons, yeah. The clients. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, but then we'd be beholden to them, and I don't want to do that. You know, I still want to do what I want all the time. That's get, true. Get off our backs, Patreon guys. <laughs> Think you can run our life. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been a week since we did one of these. Feels like a day. Always does, doesn't it? Yeah. I um, I feel like I might have slept through this week. Like I just, <laughs> <laughs> it got to Friday, and I was like. Wow, weird. It's Friday. And when the podcast came out on Thursday, I was like, after, I don't remember editing and, and doing all of that stuff, but it, I guess it happened. Like, I hope just, you did. Yeah, I'm, well, I mean, <laughs> something got released. Um, yeah, how's your week been? Yeah, it's been good. Um, did we talk at the end of the last episode about my COVID crafts and how I was failing to follow a 15-minute tutorial in an hour? Yes, you... Um, you made the wrong shape bags, zip yeah, bags, and what like, did you call uh, them? Yeah, pouch, uh, zip bags. Pouches, bag. that's what you said, pouches. <laughs> I, I love the word pouch. Um, yeah, I didn't, anyway, I've I've perfected my technique of those, I think, so sold one of those this morning, which is cool. Nice, right, well that's it then, you're on your way to your first million. Yeah, totally, <laughs> selling pouches and drunk podcasting. <laughs> How about you? The first pouch podcast millionaire. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, as I say, this week was just kind of breezed, breezed by. I don't really remember much of it. Um, we, the only significant thing we've done this week is on Saturday, uh, me and Aisha went to an escape room that was Alice in Wonderland themed because uh, she had cool. she had one of those experience for you know like virgin experience vouchers where you can do like so she's oh, right and there's always one that's like um racing a really fast car yeah yeah you can yeah. drive a ferrari around a racetrack so she yeah. wanted to do indoor skydiving but the voucher cool. is like from last year and was just about to expire and no one's doing that kind of thing yet so uh oh that sucks so we went into this escape room instead um, and it was actually really fucking fun. I've I've done one before, and we got like halfway through. It was really difficult, and then the woman came in, who who was like running the room with us, and came in to ex- explain, you know, here's what you would have had to do next, blah blah blah. And she couldn't figure it out either, and then was like, oh, I can go and ask someone else if you want. And I was like, no, just just leave it. We're just gonna go now. Um, but this what? one, was, this one was really fun, and. There were no time penalties for asking for clues. And if she could see, like, because obviously they're watching you on a camera. If she could see you were stuck for a while and you were, like, not even in the right place, she'd just start, like, start saying, you know, maybe you should be looking at this or whatever. But, right. yeah, the, the setup was really good. And um, it was uh, Escape Hunt in, in Liverpool, on the docks in Liverpool. And... um they have them like all over the world. So if have a look if there's one in your area, if you're listening, because it was, it really was fucking great. And we, we did get out with 35 seconds to spare, 
Nice. There's, there's no clock in the room, so we didn't know that. Like, and just just luck that we we made it. Because I think if there had been a clock, I'd have already accepted we weren't going to get out by that time. So I'd be like, right, we fucked it. We're never going to escape this. And the, yeah, the, and just gave up. And the woman there said that, like, she was like, yeah, so it was close, but not the closest we've had today because one of the groups earlier escaped with one second to spare. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. Um, I've never done one of those things, so I'm not entirely sure how it works, but um, I always just think it sounds really boring. <laughs> sounds like something they'd make you do on a school trip. Yeah, it, 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 there is an element of that, um, that it's like, you know, you have to use your brain to work things Organized, out. Organised, fun. Yeah, but I mean, you could say that about anything that you have to book in advance, couldn't you? <laughs> like, oh, I don't, yeah. don't want to go bowling, that's organised fun. Or, <laughs> sorry, I don't go to restaurants where you have to make bookings because that's too organised for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that is how I live my life. So. Right, well, there you go. Um, the, one, the one downside, I will say, and this is really on me and not on them, Part of it was we had to get into the Mad Hatter's house, right? Cool. Once you'd solved some of the puzzles, the Mad Hatter's house opened. The Because of the set design and you're supposed to be in Wonderland, his house was very small. And the doorway was probably five foot five, right? Now, Aisha was walking in and out of there with no problems. <laughs> I was wearing a baseball cap and couldn't see directly above my eyeline and bang my head every single time I walked through the doorway. Like I didn't learn one time. And like the last one, I banged my head and I bang, bang my teeth together. And I was just like, I might have to leave this room because I can't, (laughs) this is, this is really starting to frustrate me now. I'm getting mad at myself. Um, but we figured it out. It was quite uh, labor intensive though. There was like, there were parts where I had to like lie down on the floor to see certain things and stuff like that. And wow. I guess they've got to keep it interesting, though. Yeah, but it, yeah, but it really, it really was. It was really good. And they, um, they did the thing that they do where, as we were leaving, the woman was like, "Oh, and you know, if you had a good time today, make sure you leave a review on TripAdvisor. Say that I was really good. Blah blah blah. Leave mm-hmm. my name. I can't remember her name. <laughs> so, oh, right. that's so bad. I think it was Sarah. I think, but." That's like that's quite a standard name, girl's name. So it could have easily been Sophie or Shannon. You would not have remembered if the name was Sophie. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> well, you think you're that significant in my life that I'd be like, whoa, no way, you're called Sophie? My best friend's called Sophie. <laughs> <laughs> Someone favorited um, an item from my Etsy store the other day called Daniel, and I assumed that it was you until... <laughs> Until I clicked on this this name, and um, it took me. I didn't really know that it did this because uh, I've never done it before. But I clicked on the name of the person who favorited, and um, it took me to a list of every single item on Etsy that they've ever liked. Oh, really? Yeah. Um. So I mean, I I'm assuming you can probably like set that list to private. I don't know. I've never bothered to check, but um, yeah. Then I through that stumbled across a really horrible horrific side of etsy that i didn't know existed and i was oh dear i think i was happier when i didn't know to be honest um basically adult baby merchandise so like adult sized frilly bibs and shit like that uh they had masks like uh face masks with like the <laughs> the, the teeth part of the dummy stuck inside like hidden inside so like <laughs> like um what do americans call that a pacifier pacifier yeah so what like um, the, in- on the inside of a face mask you mean yeah so like you could have a pacifier in without people around you knowing no. about it i guess i'm i'm not here to kink shame we have said yeah. some fucked up shit on this podcast right but i don't know how such a, a large subculture of the internet has got away with openly being sexually attracted to babies and no one said anything about how weird that is well i mean i think the debate is raging constantly but um i think their argument is oh no it's not actual babies it's just it's just halfway there it's just <laughs> a step in that direction i right. don't understand but 
because I don't understand, yeah. let's not talk about it. Yeah, anyway. Lest, um, lest I, I say I'm... something that defends our loyal listeners. <laughs> I assume Jared loyal... Spears into that shit. Seems like... Our loyal adult baby listeners. Um... If you're listening, adult babies. <laughs> it looks like I could be making a killing uh, selling that stuff anyway. Yeah, so. fucking... Maybe I'll get into it. Listen, I... Not only like you know, it's 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 a, a world known thing that men think with their penises, but the internet has, has taught us that they also pay for things with their penises. Like yeah. they're just like, well, I guess I should buy this because I'm horny right now. <laughs> I hate it. Yeah. And that's you know, then it's it's obviously that that whole that whole area of of the internet who are like mad that OnlyFans exists because they think it's like extortion of men or like whatever whatever it is that like, they're mad about where they're like taking advantage of men or something. Yeah, yeah like it's oh it's a disgrace this shouldn't exist and i genuinely saw someone having this argument like he he, he must have tweeted something like sex workers should be arrested basically like it should be a crime and then someone in that thread was like all oh, right so should we shut down Pornhub?" and he's like no 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 we should keep porn up <laughs> Like, oh, dude, come That's on. That's like saying arrest drug dealers, but don't take the drugs off the street. <laughs> <laughs> I still want to benefit. You from shouldn't this. make me pay for weed, but I still want to smoke it. Ooh. Come on, man. <laughs> well, uh... that's the quickest we've ever wrapped up how our weeks went. So <laughs> maybe we're professionals now. Maybe that just happened over, over the course of the last week. What are we going to talk about for the rest of the show? Hangovers or something? Why would we talk about hangovers? What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> um, on that subject I'm on to my next bottle of flavoured gin <laughs> this oh is my, my new God. thing now um, I buy one a week it's, can't wait what flavour is it? Wildcat Passion uh, is the, is, oh, sorry no no, no 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 that's the brand name um, that's... that's not the flavour <laughs> and there's a picture of a cat stood on a key um, and then it says knock thrice and then in the like <laughs> Like this glass, like I don't know what the word would be like, like embossed. I guess like it sticks out of the of the bottle. Yeah. It says, "Knock once, knock twice, knock thrice." It's quite like um. That's fucking warped. What? It's a bit like, like, like old timey. I don't know. Um. Can you show us? Well, can you show the patrons and me? Try yeah. Oh yeah, I see. That's what. That's creepy, man. I don't like. Seems some sort of like sinister undertones to this. Knock yeah. thrice. Uh, what uh, happens when you knock thrice? I <laughs> uh, don't know. This this cat opens the door and gives you a bottle of gin. Um, <laughs> anyway, oh, passionate. It's 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 orange and passion fruit flavored, and it's fucking delicious. It tastes like a, a an ice cream. It tastes like a Solero lolly. Um, I'm just gonna read the the back here because I haven't actually read this, but this is a quote from Captain Dudley Br- Bradstreet in 1739. It occurred to me to venture upon trading in gin, the people being clamorous for their beloved liquor on account of its prohibition by act of parliament. I secured premises and nailed the sign of a cat to my window. Those with knowledge of the secrets, that's, by the way, that's capitalized, knowledge of the secrets, <laughs> could knock thrice, placing money in the cat's mouth to receive a generous measure of gin. This scheme of puss was a great success, netting me considerable fortune. Wow, okay, I love it now, so I guess the, this guy was a gin pimp or something. <laughs> Wait, but so yes. the cat wasn't real? No, it, well, it's the sign of a cat, but it must have been... There must have been a physical statue or something, because it said they... Although that was capitalised as... That was capitalised as well, money in the cat's mouth. So I think they're all double entendres, maybe. Maybe you fuck the guy and he gives you some gin. <laughs> I'm not sure that what's going on. form of payment like we were just talking about. I did have to fuck the guy in Tesco for it, but I think that was unrelated. <laughs> uh, no, but it, it's fucking delicious, so yeah. That just reminds me of, I don't know why, but have you, you know the way <laughs> I'm doing the thing that we do? You know, this is one of our segments. You know the way Americans say things different? <laughs> um, you know the way Americans say piss and really they mean bag? They mean ladies' bag. Yes. Now, I, I, that's something that's always frustrated me, but I think people do that here as well. Mm, no, I think they don't. Maybe it's old fashioned. 
No, a purse is a lady's wallet. It's but, the yeah, small but, thing. But then the handbag sometimes is also a purse if it's like a small one. No, I it's definitely not. heard that here as well. Yeah, I think it's stupid as well. Well, I've always thought. So what do they call a purse? And I think I asked someone once, and they said a wallet, and I was like, okay. I mean, that's for dudes, but okay. <laughs> um, guess I'm just fucking. <laughs> I'm just Sexism. like a victim of. Yeah, I'm just a victim of fucking gender yeah. norms. Um, <laughs> Women cannot have wallets. What would they need them for? <laughs> Wait, that's why you saw your dick, right? <laughs> I saw someone tweet earlier something about a purse, and they meant like a coin purse, like a wallet. And they said, yeah, I, I had this purse, and it, it fell out of my purse. And I was like... <laughs> <laughs> Do you not see the flaw here? <laughs> this is confusing for everyone involved. <laughs> but they definitely say coin purse because Stewie says it on Family Guy, although he has an English accent, doesn't he? So I don't fucking know. Americans, if you're listening, if you're listening, America, you let us know what the deal is with purse and purse. <laughs> um, I recently said something. Um, I can't. <laughs> I've got no idea what it was, so don't ask. But um. I jokingly said something to Sid about a mermaid's purse because I thought it meant the same thing as... Have you ever, what's that phrase? A wizard sleep. Yes, yes, right? I thought yeah. that it meant, like... but um, And I just thought it was really funny word. But it was like, um, you know, when Phoebe on Friends changes her name to Princess Consuela Banana Hammock. And she and doesn't they're like, know what a banana hammock is. yeah. Yeah, so we Googled it, or Sig Googled it, and it's actually some horrible, horrible sexual <laughs> act involving, like, shit. So, oh, no. Oh. I was like, I oh, no, like, I, thought, I thought it was a cute name for vagina. Like, I feel like um, everything you look up on Urban Dictionary, though, is a sex act involving shit. I don't think that's yeah. really, like, a good signifier. I don't think Urban Dictionary is as reliable as it used to be. People, <laughs> have, got, <laughs> people have got on there and ruined it with their ridiculousness, okay? What before when it was just purely factual? Yes, of course. My sister was telling me something the other day about how one of the substitute teachers at her school called a kid a nonce, which, if you're unfamiliar with that terminology, is a, an English slang word that means paedophile. Um, and she thought, because that's be that's become a thing that people use as like a throwaway insult now, hasn't it? Yeah, and so she, casually. Yeah, and she's just heard kids say it and thought it meant like idiot. So she just called the 13-year-old <laughs> nonce in class. And all the kids were like, Miss, you can't say that. You can't say <laughs> that. <laughs> wow. Jesus. Oh, imagine that kid. Um, you, you bringing that mermaid thing up actually reminded me that that conversation we had where you were talking about something being mermaid-flavored and how ridiculous that is. Mm -hmm. I, I realized that I have a frustration with drinks or like sweets generally but food where they they will write the flavor on the packet but the flavor doesn't mean anything like mermaid yeah. flavor where you're like but what but what does that represent unicorn flavor another yes. big one. i bought an energy drink the other day uh and it was in a green can like like it was like lime green can or yeah. apple green can <laughs> and it uh, so it, the, the flavor was ultra paradise and I'm like well I love tropical fruit so whatever's in there and it, yeah. also, also the other thing I was thinking is green starburst and green skittles are my favorite so I like lime I think yeah lime is my favorite right okay. or if something's apple flavored that's rarer yeah. but I do like that green as well um, so I'm like yeah so it's, it's going to be either that or it's going to be something tropical either way I'm onto a winner I like those things okay it was watermelon flavored Oh no. Who the what fuck does would, that? Who would read that and think, oh, Ultra Paradise, mm. that's probably watermelon flavor? Mm. And who's making watermelon flavored energy drinks? Who wants that? Yeah, that's if, fucking if, if you're listening. Wait, and you, fizzy? Yeah. Fizzy oh. watermelon. If you're listening and you purchase watermelon flavored drinks, can you stop? Because you're giving them the impression <laughs> that we want that and we don't. It's just you. Yeah, that's disgusting. I hate watermelon. Um, I thought everyone else loved it, though. But uh... The biggest problem with watermelon-flavoured things is that I've never had anything that was watermelon-flavoured that tasted like watermelon. It's, oh, it's, yeah, it's, I don't like either. 
Right, so for, for Americans, you guys have Jolly Ranchers that are watermelon flavored. That's like the big famous one. And they, they don't taste like watermelon. They taste like watermelon flavor, which is a different flavor from watermelon because watermelon like, doesn't taste like anything. Same as strawberries. They yes, yes, strawberry they can't flavor anything. They can't replicate that, can they? <laughs> no, no. It's like they just tried to do it, failed, and then was like, oh, this is just the flavor we're going to call strawberry from now on. <laughs> yeah. And then like yeah. everything tastes like that, <laughs> but none of them taste anything like a strawberry. <laughs> The first company to ever do it was like, just leave it on the market, we'll establish a precedent, and then everyone's <laughs> in the clear. We should report them to trading standards. All of them. Everyone. Well, you can't, <laughs> you can't because they didn't say it was watermelon flavoured. You, oh, yeah. you can't report but them yeah, and say, but... this didn't taste like paradise. <laughs> well, it didn't, because you, you were, were you in paradise when you Par- did it? Paradise is subjective. That'll be their what? argument. That's how Ultra, they've got you. Ultra paradise. Maybe we should have called our podcast Ultra Paradise. A paradise you don't deserve. Some sort of like sex shop. Yeah, it's, I don't know. It, so- it sounds like a sanitary towel. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a terrible energetic flavor. Oh, Christ. <laughs> <laughs> At least if it was that color, I would have thought, I bet that's watermelon flavor. <laughs> you actually opened up with a question to me about what I was doing, right, as you started recording. Um, and then you rudely cut me off. But anyway, I was taking photos of Elvis, the cat, because she, for some reason, like 10 minutes before we started, followed me into the bedroom. Now, most of you are probably familiar with her antics, but um, I don't think she's been in the bedroom at all for like a year or more, maybe. She just doesn't, she doesn't come in here. She just doesn't, uh, ever. <laughs> That's and the I, weirdest cat I've ever seen. Right? Um, I forgot. I totally forgot that she ever used to be in here. But um, she came in and I was like, whoa, this is weird. So I just stood watching her for like five minutes. And she was walking around just looking at things like she'd never been here before. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it was like she was deciding whether she was going to like investigate this pile of clothes. Or, <laughs> you know, some of the other mess that's in the room. Um <laughs> And yeah, so then she just wandered around a bit. Then she jumped on the bed and I was like, oh shit. I just remembered she went through a phase like a year or so ago where she slept on my pillow every single night. Like on my pillow right next to my head, like wouldn't wouldn't move. Super. And bear in mind, Sid is also on the other side. And then Loki down like next to me. So I was just sandwiched in between these like three animals. Um, yeah, it was a terrible time really. It was nice. Because it was like, oh, look at all these creatures that I love surrounding me. But also, like, no one wants to sleep like that. Creatures? Creatures sounds insulting. Creatures doesn't Um, sound like your fluffy, cuddly pets. And Sid. Oh, right, yes. Uh, I didn't realise he was included in the creatures. And every time now I hear the word, I think of the story you told about your dad eating prawns at a restaurant. Ah! And you saying, me dad's eating creatures. (laughs) Yeah. I love that. Oh no, I'd hate to go to bed next to prawns. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that she Elvis is currently sleeping on my pillow now. Um, so I guess that's where she's gonna live now for the next few days at least. I'll update you guys next week on yeah. where she is. Please do. Um, I the other thing that happened to me this week is I found out I might have adult onset asthma. Um, uh, so I nerd. Have to, I, have to, <laughs> I have to get tested for that. What is that stereotype that that nerds have inhalers? Why? Where did it, that come from? It's the same thing as like nerds having glasses. Like, why is get, poor eyesight anything to do with enjoying school or whatever the fuck? I suppose they they were probably both things. They probably still are both things that meant you couldn't be good at sports. Ah, oh no, I think, yeah, you've nailed it. I think that's what it is. That must Um, be it. And and now this is my excuse for why I'm fat. It's because I've I've got respiratory issues, guys. It's it's not my fault. Um, Oh, I hear that, like, rattle in your breath. So this is the the problem is um, (laughs) it's very hard to edit out uh, when when I start to wheeze, so... I've I've got to have some tests to prove I have it, and then I'll get an inhaler, and then maybe we'll 
maybe they will have a better podcast all around. Um, yeah, because then you can just edit out the bit where you're like, <sighs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, good. Well, anyway, <clears throat> <laughs> you're like struggling to get through a sentence there. You're breathing yeah. so fucking. I think the, oh. the, one of the big problems for me as well is that like I like to get very irate about things and go on very like hot-headed rants and this really stands in the way of it because I'm like yeah. I've, I, can't, I, I can't get too like excited about things because I, I need to stop and breathe more and that's oh. quite frustrating. Last night one of the things I was very angry about um, like we were turning off Netflix because we're going to bed and just as I'm about to turn it off there was a shot in the show we were watching and I was like I just I had the controller in my hand and I'm like, right, no, listen, look at this. And I just I could tell I just just like, I just want to go to sleep. Like, please don't. <laughs> do but we're watching a show on Netflix called The Fall, which is just like a crime drama. And there's a scene where she needs to print off a picture. Okay. Don't need any backstory. She's printing off a picture. They uh-huh. show she's looking at the picture on a computer, then she clicks print. And then the print window opens to select a printer and she selects the Microsoft XPS document writer and prints to that. Now, I, I use computers every day in my job. I know not everyone does. That printer is a virtual printer that opens a PDF on your screen. That's what that's for. So all she would have done mm-hmm. is opened the picture again on her screen. That's not a printer. Now, I'm not saying they should have had her actually print it out because who cares? I'm not saying they should have done the research to check. Why bother showing that shot at all? Mm. We know what printing is. We could have yeah, just clicked we... the print button. She didn't have to select a printer. Why, was that, why did they bother putting it in if they weren't going to check? Oh, by the way, is that a printer? Or is everyone going to know this is stupid? Yeah, that's fucking dumb. And that just shows you how much removed they are from real life, I guess, eh? <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, it's... No, I mean, not, you know, I understand not everyone has to use computers all the time for their job. I unfortunately do because uh, I hate them. But I just don't get how, like, you know, and I don't know who made this show. I don't know if it was a Netflix show or, or BBC originally or whatever. But how, do, how does no one on the entire crew ever just go, oh, um, don't use that one? <laughs> like, yeah. By the way, I work with computers and don't use that one. Or I have a computer. I've used <laughs> yeah. one. <laughs> um, what? Yeah, what? Would they have had to write that in the script? Like, oh, so I wanted to cut to here, selecting which printer to use. Yeah. Like, know, surely but... even the, the the furthest she would go is she clicks print on the screen. Yeah. Like, you have a default printer set up anyway, so you could just press print. Yes, it should. Go. Yeah, it should have just been Control P or whatever. You know, it was should have been ready to go. But um, she, she, this, this same character, we've, there's been like quite frequent shots of her at her computer at her desk. Yeah. And there was just one shot in an episode we were watching earlier where she's at her PC. There's something on the screen, but we're watching from, uh, from a distance. And the thing on the screen can only be described as the Who Wants to Be a Millionaire logo. That's what was on her screen. There's no way it wasn't. And I said, I said to Asha, like, is she playing Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? <laughs> like, is, is, is that what we're watching her do right now? And then someone walks in and she minimized the screen really quick. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, she was. She was playing Amazing. the games. Busted. I love that. And again, it's like, it's like, why have they chosen? Why have they put that in? Why have they been like, right, and then you're going to minimize <laughs> this blue circle. So, so, so that, <laughs> it's so weird. Just, I hate when they when they force technology into things if they don't look into it first. There's a, I, I, I yeah. may have been, I may have gone on this rant on the podcast before, but there's a joke in Friends where Chandler says, um, "You can you can just send me an email at haha not so funny dot com or something like that," and it's yeah. like that's not an email address. Yeah, yeah. Even if the technology that the ad is like correct. It just ages so quickly. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I know I, that's probably not that big of a deal, but sometimes it is. Sometimes you're like really into something, and then you like pull out a fucking flip phone or something, and you're like, yeah. oh, yeah. Well, you <laughs> oh, re- this isn't real. 
you retweeted that thing about Charlie's Angels, didn't you? Which was mm -hmm. fucking hilarious. Um, what, did, what did it say again? Um, actually, you know, I used to fucking love that film, but I haven't watched it for so long that this would never have occurred to me. Um, Bill Murray is the, is the guy, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, but I think when I, yeah, um, okay. Someone tweeted, Sophia Benoit tweeted, um, watched Charlie's Angels last night, the one from the year 2000. Um, and the thing they're trying to stop from happening is our cell phones being able to track us wherever we are. <laughs> like, <laughs> what? Why are spies should be stopping that right now? <laughs> It's, I hate it. It's so funny that technology does move in that way where... To be fair, be that, I can't believe that was 20 years ago. Sorry, go on. Yeah. People, like, invent an enemy. You know what mm. I mean? Like, that, like people have to feel like something's coming after us for some reason. People are obsessed with feeling that way. Like, the whole 5G-caused corona thing. Like, just people need, to, people need there to be a conspiracy going on or they feel like their lives aren't interesting enough. Like, just... <laughs> Or like they don't know anything. They they all want to be a wise old man who says, not everything is as it seems. Sometimes it is. Sometimes things are exactly how they look. That's yeah. that's just how it is. You know, sometimes, sometimes there's just a viral infection and it's nothing to do with chemical warfare. Sometimes that's just how it is. Sometimes technology is not trying to steal your personal data. It's just a great invention. Sometimes, sometimes it is. Sometimes. Sometimes. Um, yeah, I, I'm not surprised that that's 20 years old because I remember renting that on VHS as like, <clears throat> excuse me, as like our family, like film night on a Friday or whatever. And um, we ordered a pizza and the pizza place that we ordered from, and this is why, I'm, this is why I know it was a long time ago. It was called Perfect Pizza and they, they closed down now, but when you ordered a garlic bread, it came as a baguette, and you can't get that anywhere anymore. No way. Yeah, everywhere, it's like pizza now. Yeah, it's all pizza garlic bread. They had these like long baguette boxes that the baguette came in. It was great. Oh, that's cool. Much better. It was always cooked to perfection, because garlic bread is so easy to fuck up in, in your home oven for some reason. Like, if you just cook a frozen garlic bread, it's either going to be burnt, or the inside isn't going to be melted enough. Mm. I, sorry, I... I... I'm confused how you went so quickly to garlic bread. <laughs> because I, I was still I, thinking about saying something about Charlie's Angels. No, you can go back to that. It's just I remember the night we watched Charlie's Angels, that's what we had. And I, yeah. I'm, I know it was 20 years ago because it was such a long time ago that they did that kind of thing. Also, we rented it on VHS. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, I, I'm pretty sure I went to the cinema with my friends to see it. And I mean, yeah, I can imagine I was like 10, but still. I can't believe I was 10 20 years ago. It's just... Also grim. weird that you would go and watch that at 10 years old. I mean, weird that I was watching it, but I was just watching whatever the family were watching. Like, I didn't get a say. I was six. Nah, I love that shit. Who wouldn't love girls fighting people at 10? And, and Bill Murray. No, it was Crispin Glover that I loved, actually. Do you remember that bit? Right, no, he, no. He, he was the extremely creepy bad guy who would like cut girls' hair off and then like rub it on his face and scream. Oh my god, yes! Yeah. And I was like, "Whoa, this dude's so hot!" <laughs> right, yeah, because you love the bad guy, same as me. <laughs> 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 we have a we have a, a cancellation request from Lucy, but I'm going to push that one to next week because it's it's one that I think we need to um, we really need to dedicate some some time to some. Wow. Okay, I'm excited some, for that. Some significant time to. So, if what, you're listening, more than Fred Durst, more than oh, way more than Fred Durst, Jeez. way more than Fred Durst, because this is going to be a big blow to the community. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, if you're listening, Lucy Murray, you'll have to listen again next time. <laughs> sorry, sorry about that. But, but while you're on that, sorry to everyone who's listening, just because <laughs> if you're listening, sorry. Um, one of the things you wanted me to talk about. Last time we didn't get around to was my door-to-door -door sales job. Oh my god, yes. I fucking can't believe I didn't know like this thing about you. I think <laughs> you kind of you told me about it, but in a way where it just didn't seem interesting or fucking it, crazy. 
Well, <laughs> it could be because to me, it wasn't interesting until I got older and thought about it and was like, oh, yeah, that was fucking wild. So <laughs> when, I, when I was 16, I had a door-to-door sales job selling home insulation. And the... <laughs> this is just funny to me. The company Sorry, I worked on. for wasn't a real company. I think they were like a scam outfit, right? Because it was just... <laughs> It's just these two guys in like one office that they rent it. Like, and when I say one office, I mean like, like where you would go into the office as your place of work. And then within that office, the manager would have an office, right? Like it's one room. That was the office, right? So it's one room in an entire block of offices. So Wait, where was, do- this, was this the same company where you went on that terrifying interview where you- you got in the car with them. Oh. So, oh my God. <clears throat> so when I went for the job, um, when I went for the interview, I, I was quite impressed by what a big scale operation this was, right? It was a huge office in Manchester and they had like a reception desk at the front when you first walk in. They told me which floor to go to. Then on that floor, they had a reception desk and they told me to go and sit in the waiting area. And I swear to God, right? I was 16 years old. I dropped out of college a week earlier and I sat down and there were all these newspapers and magazines and stuff in the waiting area. And I picked up a copy of the financial times, which I'd never, I'd never even seen before. Right. I was like, who knew the financial times was pink crazy. So I picked up a copy of that. I was like, yes, I'll be reading this when they come down. I will look, I'll look very sophisticated. (laughs) They will hire me for sure. And They kept me waiting a while, and I'm like, well, you know, they must be really important. Sure, sure. Guy came down, and he asked me what I knew about the company, which is a weird question when I look back on it. He must have just asked that because that's what people ask in interviews. But but he asked that, like, when he walked up to you? No, no, no. That was the first question. Like, what what do you know about this company? Um, It was weird that he asked me that because they were not a company. You couldn't have Googled them because nothing existed. So, but they had the same name as another company. So I was like, oh, it's um, debt management, right? And he was like, no, we sell home insulation. <laughs> so, and they had the same name as another company and they didn't come up on Google and they expected you to know that? Yes. <laughs> Jesus. So we talk a little bit and then he says, right, do you want to follow me? Now... I'd not been to a proper job interview before, so I was just like, yep, yeah, this makes sense. We'll, we'll go to another room now and do more interviewing in another room. <laughs> that seems <laughs> normal. Um, and we got to the stairwell, and these two other guys met us, and then we started walking down the stairs. Oh. And we went down a few flights of stairs, and then we were back at the lobby, at the main lobby on the ground floor. And I was like, weird. What's happening now? And we walked outside. And I was like, this is weird. We're outside now. <laughs> and then um, then he went in a, a news agent's next door to buy cigarettes. And I was like, oh, he must have just wanted cigarettes, I guess. <laughs> weird, I that, that, weird that he went mid-interview, but okay, sure. <laughs> weird that he brought me <laughs> with him, but all right. <laughs> and then we start walking down the street. And I'm like, okay. Well, okay. Okay, fine. But I was too anxious to ask any questions and I wanted, I needed a job. Uh, We turn a corner and walk into an NCP car park, uh, which is like, I don't know. I'm assuming it stands for National Car Park. (laughs) Yeah. I don't know. I guess. I don't know if they have those (laughs) everywhere, but it's like a multi story car park. We get in the lift which is tiny and smells of piss. <laughs> As they always do in car parts. Yes. And I, at that point, I'm thinking this definitely is unusual. For sure, this is not the standard for an interview. This is not normal. We get to our floor, get out, and it's, you know, it's a, it's a multi-story car park. It's dark in there and it's full of cars. And then the guy goes, oh, shit, where's my car? And I'm like, oh, they're going to murder me. That's what's going to happen. I'm being <laughs> murdered. Um, and then he finds his car 
<laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay, well, that's a relief then. At least he has a car here. That makes sense that we would be here, I guess, if he has a car here, I guess. And then, <laughs> and then um, we get in this car. And I got in the car. And I don't know why. And as, as, as a 26-year-old, I wouldn't get in an interviewer's car. I wouldn't. Unless they said to me, by the way, this is a driving interview. <laughs> I wouldn't <laughs> get in the car. This is, this is a road trip interview, by the way. Um, but I just get in the car because everyone else is getting in the car. I'm like, okay, all right. And we're, dri- <laughs> we're driving for, for a little while. I bet, but you know, it wasn't that long, but it seemed like... No, I had my phone with me, so like I knew I had the concept of time and stuff, but right. I'm thinking, do I text someone in my family and say like, oh, if you don't hear from Goodbye. me again, I, I died, I got murdered, <laughs> um, I'm, 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 I'm buried in an NCP. <laughs> and uh, man, we got on the motorway, and I'm like, this is fucked. Something bad is happening now. And then we came off the motorway, pulled onto an est- a housing estate, pulled up on this cul-de-sac. And by the way, it's winter, so there's snow everywhere. And get out. So, so get, get out. we all get out the car, and he speaks to the others, and then they all walk away, and then it's just me and him. Wait, where do they walk away to? Just, at, just onto this housing estate. And then he goes to the trunk of the car, Goes to the boot. Uh, for the murder weapon. <clears throat> right. So I'm not stood at the back of the car. I can't see. And I don't want to walk over like, well, what are you getting out of the boot right now? You're being suspicious. So, yeah. so I'm like, give him the benefit of the doubt. I'm sure the guy's fine. This is normal. <laughs> he opens, like, opens up the boot and then starts taking off his shoes and putting them on a, a plastic bin liner in the boot of the car. Okay, I already know this story, but even I don't and know what's going on at this point. I'm just like, I'm I'm going to get murdered. That's what that this is this is what's happening. This is definitely a murder. Don't know what I'm gonna do. He doesn't want to get blood on his shoes. Yeah, like the inside of his car is lined with plastic, so I don't so so my body can go in there. I was I was like I was terrified, but also like frozen in this state of like like, well, what if you're overreacting? Everything might be fine. But then he just changes his shoes, closes the trunk of the car, and then we start walking up the street. And he's making small talk with me. And I'm like, oh, yes, yeah, small talk. I'm familiar. I've seen, I've seen mafia movies. This is the small talk before I get killed. I know it. I'm familiar with it. Before you get whacked. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then we knock on a house. We knock on the door of a house. It's the first house we came to, but... I, did, I, I just thought, right, well, this is the house we're going to then. Don't know what for. <laughs> this is the interview house, I guess. <laughs> and the guy, the guy opens the door and doesn't immediately go, oh, I, you're right. So I'm like, right, so, so it's a stranger's house. And the interviewer goes, hi, bud, I'm just checking to see if you've received your government grant for the uh, cavity wall and loft insulation. And I, immediately I just go, Oh, it's a door-to-door sales job. That's why I'm here. Because they hadn't told me what the fucking job was. I immediately calm down and also think, well, I don't want this job. But I needed a fucking job. So I, so I, I did it. They, the name badges they gave us, the ID badges, were printed like just from a fucking standard printer you would have in your house. And the ink was like, you know, you could see the lines in it and stuff. Really poor quality. And the company name on our badges was a different company name because the company name on our badges was a real company that sells cavity wall and loft insulation. Oh, no. But I didn't know anything about home insulation, obviously, right? Yeah. Not, only, not only did I not own a house, but the house I lived in was a council house. We didn't have any involvement with any of that. I never had. I, I, had, I didn't know anything about it. I learned everything on the job. I did that, I did that job for three months. And I wore the suit that I wore to prom, <laughs> and then uh, and then two um, pinstripe suits that I got from Tesco that were Tesco value suits because it was all I could afford, right? Because I had no money. That's why I needed the job. And the the job involved me after I think after three weeks I was like training other people, and wow. the the job involved me 
going in pe- in strangers' houses and climbing into their lofts <laughs> to draw a plan of their loft, right? And only only sort of ten years on did I go. Oh my god! I can't believe I used to climb into strangers' lofts. What the fuck was I thinking? Yeah, bear in mind you were sixteen and you looked yeah. about twelve. Yes, yeah, absolutely. I mean, people still ID me for energy drinks, which you have to be sixteen to buy now, and I'm twenty six. When I was mm-hmm. sixteen, yeah, absolutely, I looked very, very young, and people would let me in their house. Yeah, in a yeah, I would not let you in. I'd be like. Why is someone using this child as a scam? Like, yes, absolutely. Yeah. That's how I would feel too. It was, yeah, it, it's terrifying to look back on. But I remember like being in this rich woman's loft and like Hi. the loft was like immaculate. And I was thinking, ah, you can tell she's rich because the loft's immaculate. <laughs> and then there, there definitely was a moment then when I was, you know, stood in this woman's loft. And I remember thinking to myself, I can't believe she's just like let a man who's on his own into her house. <laughs> Like, I could, I could be a killer. I could be a rapist. Like, I can't believe she's just let me in this house. Really, I was a child, and she was probably thinking, this child needs solace. Like, he is. <laughs> <laughs> I need to make him a warm cup of cocoa and find his parents. <laughs> I can't believe I did that. I really can't. Like, he's almost been trafficked into the loft insulation <laughs> door yeah. sales well. And then the funniest thing was that if I hadn't done that job, I wouldn't have got the next job that I got, which was selling cavity wall and loft insulation over the phone. Wow. And if I hadn't done that job, I wouldn't be working at the company I work at now because it was only because I'd worked in a call center before that I got the job I have now. Well, no, not the job I have now, but I started working for the company I work for now. So like everything just linked on. And I remember in my interview for the the company I work for now, after one of the competency-based questions, the, (laughs) the woman interviewing me said, well, it's clear you know a lot about home insulation. <laughs> and I thought, <laughs> oh, shit, I haven't got this job. <laughs> I've, ta- I've talked about insulation too much. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. No, I totally get that because, like, you know, when you've only got that one point of reference, exactly. what else are you going to talk about? You yeah. need to use it in, like, every when, example. Exactly. When they say, um, give me an example of a time, like, okay, well, all my examples involve home insulation. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that happens when I was interviewing in my old company for um, a job in the lab that I worked in. And no, it was I was the one of the interviewers, and uh, one of the guys. It, the lab was like testing like like medical what drugs. I don't, testing drugs sounds weird. Medication. Yes. Okay, the lab I worked in was testing medication. <laughs> and guys, one of us worked in a lab that tested medication, and the other <laughs> one is me. <laughs> and the other one can um, tell you the three different types of cavity wall insulation. <laughs> this guy was interviewing, and he'd also worked in a lab, but the lab was at a company that produced fabric softener. So all he kept talking about was fabric softener. <laughs> and I guess the lab was to do with, like, I don't know, did they have the right fucking mix of chemicals and whether it caused like irritation or yeah. I don't know what the fuck. But um yeah, at the end of it I was just like, wow, this guy really loves fabric softener, eh? <laughs> I didn't realise there was so much um lab to lab snobbery in the yeah. industry. Like, well, you only test fabric softener. I save people's lives, buddy. Yeah. I mean I mean even that's a stretch, but I cure people's rashes, buddy. The, ir- <laughs> the irritation you're causing with your fabric softener, I fucking tested the drugs that fixed it. Nice. Um, one of the funny things that happened in that when I worked in the call center is I went for a job as like, there were like two levels of the call center and there was the people who generated leads and that was cold calling, like with a fucking dialing machine where it just connected you to numbers. Ugh. That was fucking horrible. Like you would you would do about 900 outgoing calls a day Ah. and probably 700 of them would be answering machines. And it was the entire job was just pressing a button to say like Ah. answering machine, answering machine, answering machine. It was, Mm. it was mind numbing. 
And the, the, then the second layer of the call center was when a lead was generated, which was very rare and usually an old person who didn't understand what they were agreeing to and didn't have cavities in their walls anyway. The, the, the second floor of the call center would then call them to clarify mm-hmm. everything and book an so appointment. You, you couldn't even see it through to the end. So you get no. no job satisfaction. No. So I applied for a role that was on the second level of the call center Mm-hmm. Because my CV said I'd been a surveyor at the previous company, and they they took me into the interview, and he was like, "How can you be a s- surveyor? When you're 16." And I was like, "Oh yeah, well the job involved this and this," and and he was like, "So how do you how did you test the cavity walls?" I was like, "Well, you know, drill into them, and then measure the depth of the cavity, and if it was this amount, then we could we could fit insulation." And he was like, "And what?" And the, did you use a? And then I can't even remember the name of the fucking utensil, really? fucking instrument, whatever <laughs> fucking thing that you that he said. But did you use one of those? And I was like, uh, no, no, we we didn't need them for what we were doing. And he's like, well, how can you how can you measure whether insulation can be fitted in a cavity wall without that? And I was like, <laughs> I don't know. The boss said we didn't need to use those. And he was like, right. And what company was this? Oh. And what was the name of the manager? And he wrote all that down and was like, right, thank you. No. Just left. Right. Oh my Clearly God. went and fucking reported them and got them shut down. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, well, I don't give a fuck. Well, fair, yeah. Conned me into taking a job by telling me it paid £150 a week. And then after the third week, they were like, right, basic pay does, doesn't continue after this. It's all commission. Uh, what? Yep. Oh, oh. Yeah. Oh, it was great. I went from earning £150 a week, which at the time was minimum wage, to earning nothing and hoping that within the 40, 50, 60 hour weeks I was working outside in the snow, I could hopefully generate a sale to earn some cash. Right. And they didn't pay for your travel and they would expect us to work all, all like in all of greater Manchester, which is 14 square miles. So I would get the bus into Manchester. They would make us go into the office every single day, even though we did nothing, but get, Oh my God. Like, we would go into the office for midday. They didn't get there till 12, right? So we would have to go in at 12 and we would have like pep talks. <laughs> we would do research, which was us finding which houses we were going to go to that day. And then we would travel out into wherever, whatever area of Manchester. Sometimes I'd be right on the other side of Manchester from where I lived and wouldn't get into like 11 o'clock at night. It was fucking oh, that's ridiculous. Just, that's, that's just one of those totally taken advantage of people we went we went to a place in north manchester once uh, and i won't say the name in case it caused any <laughs> fucking problems but um <laughs> it was it was dark because it was winter so it's fucking dark at four o'clock right and we didn't we, we did we we got into the office at 12 so we didn't start work till two and then it was dark by four but that's because they wanted us there in the evenings when people were home yeah okay and we were we were on this estate and you could sense that like it was rougher than some areas (laughs) that was so diplomatic and and i knocked on one door and the guy said um you need to leave and i was like oh oh, sorry and he was like no no no. i mean you need to leave the area you need to go home oh no like what are you talking about and he he pulled me to, to one side and he said look up there and there and there, you see all those security cameras? I have to have them because it's not safe to be here. You need to go. Oh, and, this is so <laughs> bad and scary for you. Yes, horrifying. So I just took his advice, went and got on a fucking bus and went home. Jeez. But it was the kind of area where you don't recognize the bus company names because they yeah. couldn't afford to have like real buses. Yeah, or the real buses won't refuse to like yes. operate there usually. Much more likely. Yeah, it was, uh, it was horrifying. That's so grim. I'm just reading your notes. What, to try and leave No, me it's time? just, there was, there was one, like, that's taken up quite a lot of time, but there was one last time that you said you wanted to go into more, so you said we'll save that for next week. No, I do know what it's referring to. Something that I can't remember why I wanted to bring up or what made me think of it, other than just, like, that I was quite a weird kid. Um, <laughs> and then I, I, I'm I shocked. Think, Everyone's a weird kid. Like kids are just fucking weird. But um... yeah, my favorite movie was Jesus Christ Superstar. I think we've covered this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
can I can I can I tell a story right now? It's going to take cool. thirty seconds, and you're never going to look at me in the same way again. And I want to confess this on the podcast. Cool. I wanted to be one of the bad guys in Jesus Christ Superstar. That's all I wanted, right? Was now, it Judas? Ju- well, no, Judas was was like the peak, right? <clears throat> but he wore this like red jumpsuit thing. I didn't have one of those. What I did have was a cape, right? <laughs> it wasn't really a cape. It was more kind of a gown. It was from an Obi-Wan Kenobi costume, right? Okay. But Pontius Pilate wore this purple like cape thing. So I would wear wow. that and pretend I was Pontius Pilate. There you go, guys. <laughs> I'm fucking mental. There you go, guys. <laughs> wow. What a door. Jesus. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wasn't he the one that um, that kind of signed the... Was the, like, the main guy who was like, you need to kill Jesus? He succumbed to peer pressure. Well, mob, mob mentality from, from right. the, the Jewish protesters. Anyway, sorry. Why were you a weird kid? <laughs> I don't know what made me think of this or... I remember, uh, you know, when you used to fall over in school on break or whatever, yeah. fall over in the playgrounds and like scrape my knee and stuff. Then once I was about seven or something and I fell over and my my knee was like scraped. It wasn't like a wound or anything. It was just like scraped enough that it started bleeding. And I just sat there on the floor looking at it and like was like, oh, wow, look at that. And um I think one of the dinner ladies came over and she was like, oh, you're all right, aren't you? You're very brave. And I was just like, no, I just like blood. <laughs> and then... <laughs> what the fuck? She just acted like I had said it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, but I think it was because I thought, like, vampires were cool and stuff, not because I wanted to, like, murder people or anything like that. If you said that in a school now, they would refer you to, like, a psychologist. Yeah, probably. <laughs> and also, it doesn't matter how much you like blood. Did it not hurt? I mean, uh, probably a little bit, but not not that much. I think how much you're affected by those things all depends on, like, how your parents raised you. You know, because, like, like, if a kid falls over, hurt themselves or whatever, you're not supposed to, like, baby oh, yeah, them about like, it because... Yeah. Then, like, if they see you looking worried, then they'll cry or whatever. They'll think like something's wrong. Yeah. yeah. Whereas if you just like ha, you fell over, they'll, they'll just be like, "Oh yeah, <laughs> I'm a dickhead." <laughs> no, that's. I think that's the premise, pretty much. Yeah. Plus, I was like the youngest, so I think anything that I did was just boring. Right. You no know, one like, gave when... a shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, they're like, yeah, oh, I've seen you can it all walk before. It off, bitch. <laughs> 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 I'm just kidding. My parents would not. <laughs> I took Loki to see his uncle Paul the other day. Um, my brother Paul's moved house recently, so me and Loki went to see his new flat. And um, I was a bit like, oh, maybe we won't stay long because usually when I take Loki to someone else's house, he doesn't really settle. You know, like he doesn't seem to enjoy himself. And the second like you move, he like jumps up like he thinks, oh, great, we're leaving now. But um, yeah, he had a great time. He really like seemed to love it there. And, um, tried like every single seat in in the house because my brother's got this big corner couch so it's got like enough room for like a bunch of people right and yeah he just slept in like every single position he could um it was great me and paul ended up having a drink and then we were just talking about uh, we watched the new bill and ted movie which was good oh is it good yeah i enjoyed it um i mean it's not the best thing ever but i'd watch it again yeah so we were talking about you know bill and ted when we were kids and like how much we loved it and we were just talking about school and stuff like that. And Paul's brought this up a few times about how, how much more accepting like kids are now than they were when we were younger. Hmm. Like he, he says when he was in school, no one was into music. Like there was no goths or emo kids or anything like that. I think when I went to school, senior school, there was like one goth in the school. Uh, and then by the time I left, there was like gangs. Like groups right, of them, yeah. there was loads. Well, Paul said because I think when Paul was in school, he wasn't into music at all anyway, um, either. I think it was when he left and I started school. We all kind of got into it at the same time. Like right. he probably bought a Guns N' Roses CD, and I was like, "Oh, let me borrow this." Um, anyway, uh, he said, why, what, "Why did you have to borrow CDs if you lived in the same house?" Because he wouldn't. What do you mean? Because I play it in my room on my CD player, and then he would take it back. <laughs> Um, you couldn't play it in like a communal area. It'd be like, no, I'm listening in this room. Get out. 
Well, yeah. You don't have siblings. Um, well, no, not until I was 13, <laughs> so I don't know what it's like. Right. It's like that. Anyway, <laughs> he said his one friend in school um, wasn't even like a goth or anything like that. All he liked was like Oasis and the Beatles. But apparently at the time, this was really controversial. <laughs> to be fair, <laughs> this was like the late 90s, probably. And um, so, so was it controversial that he liked the Beatles because that was like late because everyone music. was over it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. It's like, oh, everyone listens to like dance music now or whatever. Yeah, he said apparently that was his friend liking Oasis and stuff was so controversial. Oh, uh, Paul used to take the piss out of him by... <laughs> drawing pictures of him tied to a tree saying save the whales (laughs) (laughs) oh my god that was so liking the beatles was equivalent to being a a fucking tree tree hugging hippie i guess yeah wow same with him here when i was in school um if you didn't have a skinhead or even from like the age of like five if you didn't have a skinhead you were like a loser or like a hippie Oh wow, really? I can't yeah, imagine yeah. that. No, that's that's crazy. I was talking to my sister the other day who's thirteen, so like right in the midst of if you don't do this then you may as well not exist. Um, yeah. And and I was saying how like she's growing up you know, as shit as shit as being thirteen is all the time. She's growing up at a time when there's way more available. Like I go I go and visit and she will just sit on her phone. Like, once she gets home from school, until she goes to bed, she sits on her phone. And I'm like, you're not bored. Like, do you not want to do other things? And then I think, like, when when I was her age, we had MSN, which was like a big leap in technology. MSN Messenger. And then online gaming, which was also like, like that, that had existed on PCs for ages. But to have that on your PlayStation was a big deal. And we would just do that. And now all of that is in your phone. So I, I guess she's just doing the same thing. All you do is sit on your phone all the time. No, but I, this is what I was saying to her. Like, my phone is an accessory to whatever I'm doing. So I'm watching Netflix and I'm on my phone. But she's just on her phone in a room where my grandma's watching quiz shows. Like, I, get you. I, I would be bored of sin, but that's just their life is like sending, like I said there, recently, yeah. like sending photos of their foreheads to each other to keep up their. Sin- keep up their snap streak like just that's that's all that matters uh which she was also saying like because i i was trying to say you've got so much more and everyone's so much more accepting of all these different lifestyles and blah 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 and she said how like there's however many trans people in her year and she goes to a fucking she goes to this school that's so like old-fashioned and set in its ways or whatever and the way she described trans people was they used to wear gray blazers and now they wear purple ones because that's the measure that the school has put in place is if you transition from one gender to another, they give you the color blazer of the other gender. Wait, the, the different genders wear different blazers? That's yep. fucking weird. Exactly. How, like, and the school hasn't gone, the school, the school has like realized, okay, so, so. This is something that, that exists in society. And so what we'll do, we'll, if, if, if they're transitioning from, from female to male, we'll give them the, the male school uniform. <laughs> and not, let's give everyone the same uniform. That's like funny. happened when I went to that same school. They changed after I left. What the That's fuck? Bizarre, man. That's mental, isn't it? Yeah, I was going to say at least they're trying, but I guess they're partly going back. Okay, this has been episode four. 53 of the Hangover You Don't Deserve podcast. I've been Daniel. This has been Sophie. Say goodbye, Sophie. Goodbye, Sophie. Please remember to like, subscribe, review wherever you listen. Find us on all social media at AHYDDPod. Uh, find us on Patreon for a bunch of cool perks and exclusives. It's patreon.com slash AHYDDPod. Send us an email. Tell us what was the cool trend when you were at school and what would you have been bullied out of the room for if you didn't have it. Uh, <laughs> AHYDDPod at gmail.com. And uh, fuck you, Jared Spear. dot com. Fuck you. Bye. Bye bye. Are they still drunk? Are they hungover? Sophie and Daniel definitely not sober. Thank you for listening to the Hangover You Don't Deserve podcast.